Royal Caribbean has announced it's going to restart cruises in Singapore, which is great news. And on top of that, we have our first look at all their new health protocols, and we're going to dive into all of it up next. Hey everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and Royal Caribbean announced it will restart cruises in Singapore in December. And when these first cruises come back, they're going to have a brand new set of health protocols that will be implemented on these first sailings. These new rigorous protocols are known as the Royal Promise. And it's our really our first look at what kind of changes we can expect to find on Royal Caribbean cruise ships going forward. In fact, I reached out to Royal Caribbean about this and they said these policies in Singapore are expected to go fleet wide as well. So what happens in Singapore is a good preview of what to expect when cruises restart in the United States, Europe, or really anywhere else. Now, these new protocols are based on the healthy sail panel recommendations, as well as in keeping with local guidelines. I've sorted through all these new protocols and policies and everything that I could find on Royal Caribbean's website, and we're gonna go through the major things that you should know about these new protocols. Number one, 100% testing of everybody on board. Royal Caribbean is committed to test every single passenger and crew member, period. Every guest and crew member will be required to test negative for coronavirus prior to boarding the ship, and Royal Caribbean will cover the cost for these sailings that are departing on or before January 30th, 2021. All guests must undergo a COVID test within 48 to 72 hours prior to boarding and obtain a negative result. The cost of this test is included in your cruise here for sailings departing on or before January 30th, 2021. Now, of course, you're wondering, okay, what happens after that? I think Royal Caribbean is going to kind of see where it goes. A lot of this is based on what's happening in Singapore, but it remains to be seen what may happen beyond that in Singapore as well as other places around the world. So keep that in mind. Now, what happens if you can't cruise? Refunds, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, if you test it positive at home or at the terminal, for Singapore sailings, if you test positive and cannot join the cruise, you can still receive a 100% future cruise credit in the event you contract COVID-19 within the three weeks before your departure and, and are unable to cruise. There's also a 100% future cruise credit if you or someone in your travel party test positive within the first three weeks prior to the cruise. 100% future cruise credit if you or someone in your travel party test positive at the boarding terminal, and a 100% refund for you and your travel party if any of you test positive during your cruise. In addition, Royal Caribbean will cover COVID-19 related costs up to $25,000 Singapore dollars or the equivalent of $20,000 US dollars per person in your travel party for onboard medical costs, costs of any required quarantine, and travel home. Aside from a positive result, certain circumstances can lead to a denial of boarding for you and your party, but they're not limited to this, but this is just some of the examples they provide. Failure to affirmatively state a willingness to comply with safety and public policies prior to boarding or at any time during the voyage, failure to comply with these safety and health policies, refusal to wear face masks, anybody who is unable to provide verification of a negative test, temperature readings that equal or exceed 37.5 degrees Celsius, symptoms outlined in the health questionnaire, contact tracing reveals close contact with someone with, who has had COVID-19 and or refusal to submit to a secondary health screening, that goes forward from there. But the takeaway from all of this is that if you contract COVID either during the cruise or even before the cruise, you're not out of money. Next up is upgraded filtered air. Royal Caribbean has promised that ships will have a new HVAC system that will continuously supply 100% fresh, filtered air from outdoors to all indoor spaces. The air is drawn from one side of the ship for cooling and ventilation, then removed via exhaust on the opposite side of the ship. This continual intake of fresh air replaces the air in any space with a total air change up to 12 times an hour in staterooms and 15 changes an hour in large public spaces. In local spaces like smaller venues in your room, Fan coil units provide an extra layer of protection, continuously scrubbing the air of pathogens using a high-grade MERV-13 filter that captures aerosols 0.3 to 1 micron in size with 90% efficiency, fine enough to filter colds, flu germs, and, of course, coronavirus. Now, in addition to that, there is also new cleaning standards, and a new set of medical-grade cleaning standards will be implemented on Royal Caribbean's cruise ships. All ships are thoroughly cleaned and disinfected prior to every voyage and consistently and frequently throughout your sailing as well. Frequently touched areas like elevators, escalators, stairways, and promenades will be cleaned every two hours and gangway rails every 20 to 30 minutes during busy times. Staterooms are cleaned daily only when guests are out of the room and particular attention is paid to frequently used items and surfaces. Now, let's talk about a big topic, reduced capacity. At least initially with these Singapore sailings, Royal Caribbean will only let 
a maximum of 50% capacity in order to foster social distancing and provide enough space for guests. The number of guests on board may be adjusted in the future as situations evolve, but at least in the very beginning, the ship will only be half full at most. Signage, ground markings, and crew safety ambassadors will be posted throughout the ship and terminal to kindly remind guests of distancing and other protocols. Seating in public spaces such as dining venues, theaters, and pool decks will be spread out and elevators will be limited to no more than four guests or one travel party at a time. All right, now it's time to talk about face masks. And yes, everybody's gonna be required to wear a mask on board. Specifically, guests should wear face masks in nearly all public settings, regardless of physical distancing measures, but will not be required to wear face masks in their own stateroom. There are exceptions, however, such as dining venues where guests can eat and drink without face masks while seated, provided physical distancing is observed. Also, guests should not wear face masks while engaged in activities that may cause the mask to become wet, like when in swimming pools or when participating in strenuous activities like jogging, running, or fitness classes at the fitness center. Now, you also should be aware that certain masks are not going to be allowed on Royal Caribbean. These include neck gaiters, open shin bandanas and scarves, and face masks with valves do not meet health authority guidelines and will not be permitted. And lastly, what happens if there's a positive case on board? Listen, no one wants to be stuck on a cruise ship. We all remember what happened earlier this year with some of those cruise ships in Asia. And Royal Caribbean is very aware of this and has developed a robust tiered response plan in place to deal with that sort of situation. The tiers increase protocols and vigilance on board while providing transparent updates to guests along the way. In partnership with the local authorities in Singapore, Royal Caribbean has developed transport protocols to ensure that they can get anybody home safely. Thanks to rapid technology-enabled contact tracing, the cruise line will also be able to advise anybody on board in the event you had extended contact with any known case. Now, rapid testing can also be conducted right on board in the medical lab that allows for rapid, accurate on-site RT-PCR testing with results in under an hour alongside a multitude of other evaluative tests. So there you have it. There's the most important things I think most people are truly concerned about when it comes to cruising, resuming, and some of these new health policies that Royal Caribbean is going to implement on its first sailings. Again, these policies in general are going to be planned for the rest of the fleet as well, but you should also be aware that all these policies are subject to change, and as things progress and as Royal Caribbean sees what's happening on board their ships, they're going to test and adjust accordingly. So with all that in mind, it's a good framework to understand where Royal Caribbean is coming from and all the extensive steps required in order to make sure that they're going to make everybody safe on board. Now, there's a lot more than just what I listed in this video, and you can find more information about this on our website at royalcaribbeanblog.com. In fact, check out the link below this video for more information about these new protocols, what to expect, etc. And I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on those notifications so that way YouTube lets you know when I have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.